What's going on, Let's Talk family? Today I'm here with Core 2, Season 2 of Let's Talk, with the almighty, all powerful, Dr. Joe Johnson. What's up, man? How you doing, man? What's going on? What's going on? How you feeling? How you I'm living? I'm amazing. I'm amazing. No complaints. No complaints. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the way to live. That's right. That's right. So let's start off uh, with a simple question. What does wellness mean to you? What does wellness mean to me? Uh, I think when I was younger, I probably had no idea what wellness meant because it was because when you play sports, you're just thinking about the physical, right? Being strong, lifting weights, running, all that stuff. Uh, but now, when you get older and you really understand what wellness is, to me, it has to do with making sure you're taking care of your mind, your heart, and your soul, right? Mindset, soul set, right? And heart set, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so, for me, that means what, everything is in total alignment. Right. So we're talking mental health. We're talking about your spiritual health. We're talking about your physical health, everything in total alignment. So for me, that's what wellness is. So. Physical, mental and spiritual, spiritual. Yeah. So does that mean a workout is mandatory for you every day or like what's mandatory for you to keep your, your wellness in check? Yeah. So so some people work out every day. Some people don't. Um, you got to do what works best for you. But I think what's most important, because when people hear the word workout, oftentimes they're thinking you got to go get a gym membership. You got to yeah. go to the gym. The, the heavy weights. Yeah, yeah. It's not about that. What it's about is movement, right? What is it? Take a walk. You know what I'm saying? What it's about is get have a jump rope at home. Do some jump, right? And so what's most important is that you have some type of physical activity, right, when it comes to the workout. You know what I'm saying? But that's just the physical part, okay? Because then you got to be able to work out the mindset, Hard set and soul set. You know okay. what I'm saying? But but to me it's all connected. Now before we get before we move any further, I wanna kinda circle back already mm -hmm. to your younger days. You said when you were younger, yeah, you weren't even thinking about the mind, the soul. No. So when you were younger, what were you thinking about? <laughs> I was thinking about how I could be bigger, faster, stronger. Right? Because when when you're operating in survival mode, uh, I always tell people because what they say is, man, I grew up in the hood. I grew up. I'm like, yo, listen, the hood is not a place. The hood is a state of mind. That's why you have people that still live in the hood or they leave the hood, but they have the same issues. Right. When I say hood, I'm going to give you these. Right. Because once again, the hood is not a place. It's a state of mind. But people leave there and they have the same issues. So people got to understand a hood is not a geographical location. You feel me? Right. But when I was younger, you when you grow up in neighborhoods like that, you, you feel like you're in survival mode. And so for me, it was just making sure I can do whatever I can to get out of that. And it was playing sports. And so being bigger, faster, stronger was what I thought wellness was. When you see yourself in a situation like that, like you said, sorry about that. Like you said, how do you differentiate? How do you have a different mindset to get out? Like what's the difference between you and the guy that's like in your class telling you like, hey man, let's skip school. Like, let's go on truancy, da, 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 da. Like, yeah. like what, what's the difference? How, how or why, how or why? Well, well, first don't make any assumptions that I didn't do any of that, right? <laughs> but but, okay. but real talk, the, what differentiates some people is not wanting to stay where they are, right? And so for me, I did not, I knew that the way in which I grew up and the way in which some other people grew up, and that doesn't mean I didn't have a great family, but there were some things that I knew I didn't want for my children, right? And so when you have a focus on the bigger picture, you allow yourself to do things, and not all the time, because developmentally, sometimes you're easily swayed when you're young, when you're young right? Damn. But however, when you have your, your focus and your mind on the bigger picture of what you want, now you have to figure out how do I do things to get me to the place that I want to get, right? And so for me, uh, did I do some things that nobody knows? Of course, right? But did I do some things that some of the other people that I used to hang out with? No. Some of them, you know, prison, some dead, all that. But what's most important is I had my eye on the prize and I did what was necessary in order to get out of survival mode and create this level of, of new, this new knowledge to understand wellness from a better place. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit right before, no, right after high school. So I imagine you said sports were, were a big deal in your life. Yeah, 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 no doubt. So what happens when 
when sports are about to be gone. And by be gone, I mean, you know, your season's over. Yeah. How are you surviving then when there's no, when there's no more sports? So the way that I hear that, there's two things, right? So when the season is over, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that sports are over, right? Because you're resting the body and then you're doing whatever is necessary for you to be better the upcoming year, right? However, another way that I hear that is when you're done playing and you know you're done playing sports for good, what do you do, right? And yeah, so I got an opportunity to work out for NFL teams. Oh, really? And when I didn't get a call back, I was crushed, right? I played some arena ball, but arena ball is not, one, you don't get paid like you do in the NFL, and two, I didn't love, I realized I didn't love football like that. I loved basketball, I grew up playing football and basketball. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying this, when I knew I was done playing football, I couldn't watch football for about two years, right? It be, because you gotta understand my identity was caught up in being Joe Johnson, the athlete, right? And so when that's all you know as a youngster, you sports, 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 and then like, you know, the other side was girls, 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 right? But when your identity is caught up in what you do, not necessarily who you are because identity is who you are, right? But when it's caught up in what you do and what you're good at, what happens is when that's gone, you don't know who you are and you're lost. And so for me, I couldn't watch football for a couple of years. So after sports, I didn't know. I was lost for a while and I had to figure it out. Now, man, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's just crazy. But do you think that's a major part in a lot of what what I'm trying to say is, do you think a lot of athletes have that same uh, identity issue? Oh, yeah. no Especially doubt. if, like you said, you no, know, they get called, they get called up to the combine, mm -hmm. no call, no callbacks, yeah. back to working nine to five. Is that what? Do you think that's what happens? Well, this is the thing. Like when you when you think of college athletics, number one, you have people that get opportunities. One, it's a, it's it's slim the amount of people that get an opportunity to work out for NFL teams, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's slim, even slimmer for those who get drafted. And what happens is when you are done and you're not getting a call back or you know your days of playing whatever sport is over, what happens is some people, they didn't, they didn't get their degree. Some people, they never really paid attention in college, right? So now you see them going back and working jobs that they could have got fresh out of high school. You know, and then that's frustrating because people saw them as this superstar on the field or on the court or wherever. And then that's gone. And now they feel like a nobody. Interesting. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And so they get upset. And then sometimes they fall back into doing things that folks were doing in their neighborhood. Right. Maybe they selling dope. Right. Selling drugs. Uh, you know, they just fall back into things that they know is not beneficial for them. But the issue is an identity issue, because when you feel like. All it is, all you are is that sport you play. You miss out on all those other beautiful areas of who you are, right? But you become lost because you've been doing that your whole life, right? So it's whatever keeps up that superstar identity, no matter like what it entails doing, whether it's going back to the block and selling dope or just you, you're, you're, you're trying to recreate that feeling, mm -hmm. right? So for me, um, you know, I speak for a living. I get to speak all over the world, right? And what happens is, what happened for me was, I worked in K through 12, higher education, corporate America. And in all those times, something in my soul was saying, yo, this can't be it, right? And, and something in me was like, yo, you were not born to just pay bills and die, right? And, and, and what it was, was this. I had to, I had to learn that I was more than what I did. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, everything about them is what they do. That's when you ask people, hey, hey, who are you? They start naming off their resumes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like jobs. Right, and that's not who you are, right? Who you are is here, it's core, like certain uh, 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 attributes, traits, right? Those, those, those personalities, and so it's important for people to understand if you wanna get past whatever it is when you're feeling down, you gotta first know who you are. You know what I mean? Okay. And, I, and, and I'm sitting here thinking just about that question. It's a very, it's a very difficult question if you haven't been in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Because some people, they don't understand what it means to feel like you've lost everything that you've been working on your whole life. And that's what happens when sports ends. You feel like you've lost everything. And 
I needed that same high. That's why I speak now because I practice. Then there's an audience. It's just like sports. Yeah, especially if you've been doing it since you were in middle school. Let's say you spent 11, 12 years yep. working to get to that final destination, which yep. is the lead. Yep. You don't get it. What's, what else? There you go. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So talking about how you got into speaking, what was like, how, how, how was the first event? Do you remember the first event? Oh yeah, I got a, I, I got the audio. Got I got the, the video. I got the audio. It is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. But uh, the first time that I spoke, uh, my grandfather, uh, who ascended, where right, he passed away, uh, the Reverend Dr. Donnie Sims, uh, super dope, super dope grandfather. But he allowed me to speak on Father's Day. Okay. And so I spoke about like fatherhood and the meaning of fatherhood. I wasn't a father yet, but I was speaking about it from the, the sense of, of being a son, right? Yeah. And boy, it was trash. I was listening <laughs> to it, I was stuttering, I was, right? But it was my first time to get up and actually put something together and, and speak in front of people. Okay. Yeah, I feel like as a son, I mean, just me personally speaking, I can't ever talk about being a dad. My dad tells me, you, you will never know how this feels. Like how it feels to be a dad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. So I, like ever since then, I've tried to put myself in, in their position. But like you said, I don't think, it's just one of those things that you'll never know what it feels until you get there. I, that's true, that's true. And I'm not even gonna say, but I'm gonna say, and as a son, you also learn what it is you want to do as a father. Right. Either you want to take some stuff from your father. Mm -hmm. Right. And implement that when you become a father or it's something like, oh, I don't want it. My dad did this. Or my pops did this. I don't want it. Right. And so you, you're learning through fatherhood. And I, and I hope that as a son, uh, you always have the understanding that sometimes parents did the best that they can. There was no malicious or, 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 or bad intent. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes they're doing the best that they can. That's you got to respect them. You know? Yeah, it's a lot of times I look back. I'm like, man, you know, I wish I wish that would have gone differently. But I think back now and it's like, no, nah, that's that was the best they could. Yeah, yeah. That was the best they could do. That was like 110 yeah, percent. I yeah. just was just being a child. And you couldn't see. say a little. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was a kid. I couldn't see. I, couldn't see. I got you. I got you. But yeah. <laughs> no, that's interesting, man. Like the, yeah. As we're talking, like this is kind of hitting me, too. Yeah. At the same time. Like, like, think about it. Um, the generation, like is, is your pops, what, 40s, 50s, 60s? 50. Okay, so that generation, my, my parents' generation, they come from something different, right? Mm -hmm. They come from uh, uh, those 60s, those 70s, where, you know, racism was extreme. Racism is alive and well, mm -hmm. but it was in your face, right? Oh, like, yeah. Right? So they come from an understanding of the world that's different than what we have. Right. And what I what I mean by what we have is there's more opportunity. Right. Um, things have changed in the sense of we're able to access resources more. Right. We're able to get information more, more than they could. So sometimes they're speaking to us from a framework or from an ideology of the, the 50s, 60s and 70s when it's like, no, this is a new age. Yeah. There's things that I can do different. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to always understand that contextually. Um, if they're still operating from back how they grew up and what they know, they're not going to be able to sometimes lead us in the right direction the way that we need it in the present day. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how can, it's like mm, applying for jobs. They still think that, well, some parents do. It's like, go take the, go take the paper application to the store. Yeah. And it's like, they're not doing that no more. Right, 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 Everything right. Everything online. Yep, yep, Everything yep. online. That's true. You'll bring the paper to the store and they'll be like, do it online. Yeah, yeah, that's real. No, man, that's crazy. So now, as a father, mm -hmm. as you are a father of two two children, yeah. both boys, how mm -hmm. does that feel? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I think in all in all honesty, sometimes I, I have to look in the mirror and ask myself, what am I doing? It's pretty good as a father and what are some things I need to work on and I know for me I have to be very careful because even as a father and adult you still go through things right yeah. and so you have to make sure that the things that you're going through 
you don't come home and take it out on your children, whether you're yelling at them, you're short with them, you're not spending time with them. And I really had to pay attention to that because I was doing so much. And my wife, Dr. Brandy, said to me one time, like, you know, you're here, but you're not really present, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, what do you mean? And I realized that a lot of times, because I was doing so much, I would sit with my kids, but I'm on a laptop, they watching TV, yeah. and there's a difference between being there versus being present, right? And I had to increase my level of being present so that they can really have their father in those moments. Because time, that's the definition of love. The amount of time you spend with someone. Yeah. Unconditionally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I've heard that term before and yeah, I think it's true. I feel like even as, that can apply in relationships as well. Oh yeah. Like, like you're there hanging out with them, but you're on your phone, you're not, you're staring in space, yeah. whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. So next, so next time you go to a restaurant or somewhere with, you know, maybe you're on a date or you with family or you with friends, what you do is you say, all right, all phones are, are put them up. Whoever pulls out their phone first, they gotta pay the bill. That was Carolina. They gotta pay the bill. That was Carolina. No phone? No phone the whole time? Yeah, yeah. Someone might run it, let me tell I'm you. telling you, I'm telling you. And, and, and people are so used to just, you yeah. know, scrolling, but it, 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 will, it will allow an opportunity to just talk and connect. You know, versus everybody's doing their own thing, right? But yeah. it's a fun game. And some people, like you said, they probably can't do it. Yeah. No, I'm using it. Do I'm it. Do it. it. And then let me know how it goes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Being a well-known public speaker, mm -hmm. what are some of the common things that people come up to you and you're like, hey, uh, Dr. Joe Johnson, can you come speak to our company about this? Like, yeah. what's the main or common problem that you see? Or not even problem, but what's the main topic that you see people want addressed? Well, so let's talk about research real quick, right? Okay. Um, when you look at research, they say about 52% of Americans are unhappy at work. They say about 71% are disengaged at work. Another 50 some percent are actively looking for a new job while they're at work, right? That's crazy, right? And so that tells me there's a disconnect between what they're teaching you as you grow up in terms of your career and what you're act actually doing. Because what we hear all the time is dream big, follow your dreams. That's cool, but when you look at the research, something is off. And so for me, it was all about reconnecting people with their purpose, right? And teaching them that you don't find your purpose, you don't discover your purpose. Your purpose is already in you if you understand your purpose. Because when you think about the definition, right? Let's think about dreams. Dreams are thoughts or ideas that may or may not come true, mm -hmm. right? Purpose is the reason for which something or someone exists. To me, that's way more powerful. And there's a spiritual connection there. And so your, your purpose is already in you and it's about you unleashing your purpose. And then the, the other part to that is if you never tap into the initial layer of your purpose, you will never get introduced to the other levels of your purpose. Okay. You feel me? But how does one go about looking at, looking at purpose or even discovering, like, like you said, you don't discover it, but do you think things like meditation or even just reading self-help help books, do you think that that can help increase the levels of people finding out about their purpose? So let's go back to what we talked about earlier. We were talking about identity, mm -hmm. right? And, and to answer your question in a more specific way, everything that I talk about, whether I'm, I'm speaking in the corporate space, uh, in higher education, entrepreneurs and education, whatever it might be, everything is grounded under identity, knowing who you are, purpose, why are you here, and transitioning, how to get from where you are to where you want to be, okay? So whether I'm, whether I'm working with individuals in my coaching or I'm speaking, everything is grounded in that. And what I want you to understand is that when it comes to this, this word purpose, a lot of us don't have an understanding. And part of it is when you don't know who you are, it's hard to get clear on anything else. Oh, okay. You, you see the connection? So first it's about you. Identity. You've got to find out who you are. you got to know who you are. Yeah. Because if you don't know who you are, and you get around some people and you think what they're doing is cool and it's dope, they can pull you and lead you in the wrong direction. But when you know who you are, you have the ability to listen and be like, mm, you have discernment, right? You have the ability to say, you know what? That doesn't feel good, so I'm not gonna do that. But when you don't know who you are, anybody can pull you or tell you what to do. And oftentimes you do it. That's why you have so many people locked up. You have people dead. You have people in jobs that they hate, right? And so it's important for us to first know who we are, identity. That's why we started with that in the conversation.
Yeah, it's that if you don't stand for if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Fall for anything. Man. Fall for anything. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Like it's it's, it's all processing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, that's really great. Identity, purpose, transitioning. It's all everything that I talk about is grounded in it. Everything. Whether I'm talking about uh, uh, building relationships in, a, in, a, in an organization, uh, climate and culture change in an organization, whether I'm talking about diversity in an organization, everything that I talk about is grounded under identity, purpose, and transitioning. Who are you? Why are you here? And how do you get from where you are to where you want to be? Wow. <laughs> All powerful for a reason. Powerful there you go. Reason. There you go. One of the most important, this is what I, this is what I realized in the work that I've done over the years. One of the most important questions we must ask ourselves that too many of us don't, you have to ask yourself, what am I lying to myself about? That's a bore, isn't it? That's a bore. You feel me? Right? What am I lying to myself about? Because you can't do the work that's necessary unless you become honest with yourself, right? And so many of us, because we know the work is hard, we know it's a process, right? When you, Because you got to dig deep when you really want to do the work, when you really want to be in alignment, when you really want to have that mindset, heart set and soul set and be fully aligned so you can unleash that purpose, right? When you really want to do the work, that shit ain't easy. Excuse my French. It ain't easy. It ain't easy, right? There's tears, there's confusion, there's pain. And the other part is, you can't do it alone. Everybody, so many people, their favorite phrase is, oh, I'll figure it out. And they take that all throughout their lives. And the problem is, you can't figure everything out on your own, right? So once you tell yourself the truth and be honest and stop lying, thinking you can do everything on your own, you'll go get a therapist. You'll go get a spiritual coach, right? You'll go find a circle of people that can help you get into alignment so that you can do the stuff that you want to do in terms of creating the life and career that you desire. But what's most important is that we ask ourselves the question, what am I lying to myself about? And stop using this phrase, I'll figure it out. Because you can't figure out nothing on your own. You gotta do the work. And you ain't doing it by yourself. That's good. I'm <laughs> That's great. I'm just saying. Dang. All right? So the key is to, like you said, stop lying to yourself. Yeah. But how does one go about, because man, like you said, it's hard. It's hard leaving that one group of people alone yeah. that you know are gonna end up in one spot. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, what would you say? Because leaving, because I imagine that's that's all that person knows. Uh -huh. That uh, Those friends are all they know. Yeah. This lifestyle is all they know. How, how, how bad do you wanna have how bad do you want to have to, to want that in your life? Yeah. To just leave that all alone. Well, this is the thing. Um, some people don't like when I say this, but I like to speak at least my truth, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I've learned in my life that we've been programmed, right? And I say this all the time, just like a cell phone, just like a computer and any technology, as humans, we've been programmed. And I always tell folks, there's a reason with your cell phone, you get, uh, uh, an alert every couple of months saying it's time to what upgrade your operating system, right? And some of us haven't upgraded our operating system to the present day, right? And when you when you don't understand that your program, you operate in a space of I learned this as a child and this is how the world is. And the reality is that's not true, right? What we have to do is we have to understand that in order for us to move forward, we have to reprogram ourselves. And as Dr. Calvin Mackey says, we nowadays we have to have the ability to learn something, unlearn something, and relearn something else. I'm gonna say that again. Nowadays, we have to have the ability to learn something, unlearn it, and relearn something else. You feel me? And that's really important because some of us think once we get information as a child, we take that information and operate from that mindset throughout our lives. And the reality is we all evolve, right? And you have to always ask yourself, why, what, what, what have I been programmed with, right? In terms of mindset, why do I believe that? And also what is that programming hindering me from? 
Because oftentimes there are things that you've been programmed with that's hindering you from the success that you really can have. And people don't like me saying this, but religion is a big one. It programs people to think a certain way. So now if I meet you and you don't have the same religion, oh, I can't be friends with you. Or whatever you say, no, that's not real. You know what I'm saying? And we have to be very, I love, listen, I love anybody that believes in something higher than themselves, right? So I, I, don't, I don't knock religion, but I've, I've realized that religion will often close us off to anybody that's not in our religion. Mm. You follow me? Okay, yeah. Right? Um, God is real. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me be clear, right? Um, but then what people do is, if you don't do, if you don't pray or do God the way that I do God, oh, you're not doing it right. Yeah. That's not real. You know, but we're programmed to think certain things are supposed to be one way. And I always say one plus five is six. Three plus three is six. Two plus four is six. There's many ways to six. It's not one way. Right. And so we have to understand that we're programmed in order for us to move forward. No powerful. Dr. <laughs> Joe Johnson. Man, no, nah, this is I feel like this is great advice. Yeah. And just. Just updating your system like that mm -hmm. will. Just thinking about it, but I feel like from someone who hasn't updated their system, yeah. just just the idea of that is scary. It is. It's, it's very scary. It's, it's also scary to be in the same place 10 years from now. Right? So where would you rather be? Scared and you're moving in the right direction or scared and staying in the same place? That's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? It's scary, but that's okay because we don't operate in fear. When you learn to operate as though you have the power, right? Right. My boy calls it God power, mm -hmm. right? When you have the power to create the life and career that you desire, right? That has to do with doing your healing, right? Going to therapy, right? Spiritual, all of that. When you have the ability to reprogram, when you have the ability to really know who you are, it's not as scary because fear is not, no matter what, we all gonna have a little bit of fear, but you can have fear and stay still or have fear and keep moving towards where you're supposed to be. It is what it is. Like I walk, matter of fact, I run towards what I'm scared of. And some of us are scared of ourselves. That's why when we're starting to change, when, when your boys or your, or your homies or your family come to you and be like, man, you changing, your, your, the phrase you should say is, I'm supposed to. Right? Yeah. I'm supposed to. But some of us, we're, we, we get so scared of what people are going to say about us as we evolve into the person that we're supposed to be evolving into. We're so th we're, we're so scared and we're thinking about what mama's saying, what daddy's saying, what grandma's saying about us, what our church folks saying about us. But let me tell you something. You got to not give a damn about what other people are thinking when you're in your process. You can't care what other people are thinking. Because when you start to care what other people are thinking, it slows up and hinders your process of evolution. And all of us are expanding. I always say we're, we are a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> It's great. I mean, I feel like you, you've you taken it apart like perfectly yeah. and explaining it so everybody can understand as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Man. Now, any... You over here processing, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's how real this information is. It's like, <laughs> it's hidden. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Any, any tips to help out with that? Upgrading of your system. Absolutely. All right. Just any three tips in general for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So I'm gonna I'm give you a, I'm gonna give you a couple, and then we can close this thing out, right? The first one is this: your purpose and your profit is directly connected to your individual healing. Right. What does that mean? You have to do the work, get you a therapist, a, a spiritual coach, any type of business coach. You have to do the work on yourself so that you can operate fully in your purpose and you get to the bag, right? Because people, for some reason, we don't like to talk about money, yeah. right? And a lot of times when you don't come from money, it's hard to talk about money, right? Um, so once again, your purpose and your profit, they're directly connected to your individual healing. The second thing is we have to understand and be very, very clear about this word accountability. Why? Because our ability to be accountable is directly connected to what? Our accounts receivable. Now I'm talking to the money, right? I'm yeah. talking to the money, right? When you're not accountable, right, you're pushing the bag away. Right. You got to be accountable for the things that you have not done and be accountable for the things that you've done. Because once again, when someone is not accountable, it pushes you further and further away from the bag. All right. And the last thing is we do two things in life. We evolve or we evaporate. That's it. 
It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> if I were a bad breed, that's, that's a bore. Yeah, yeah, a lot of sure. bores. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But before we, before we turn off the cameras, do you want to shout out uh, social media? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, just make sure you go to purposeoverdreams.com. Go to purposeoverdreams.com. You can follow me at Joe Johnson Speaks. Um, but what's most important is you can follow me, do all that stuff. But what's most important is I hope that if you watch this, you know that you should do the work, right? This isn't about me sounding good. I'm hoping that you take what I say and you implement it in your life because I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not an inspirational speaker, right? I'm hoping that when you listen to me, you take action when you leave because there's no reason for you to feel motivated, insp inspired, but then you go and keep doing the same thing. Yeah. When you leave me, I want you to go and actually implement some of the things that you heard me talk about. So for me, I'm hoping that, yes, you follow me at Joe Johnson Speaks, right? You go to PurposeOverDreams.com. But what's most important is you actually do the work. All right? Cool, man. Appreciate you coming yes, on. Yes, indeed. Appreciate you. All right. Plus, our family, that's been this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.